Okay. Hey guys, what's up? Daniel here. So I wanted to talk about um, something I've been looking into, or at least I was looking into, and that is USB audio interface. So currently I have two different audio interfaces. I have a Behringer Euphoria UMC 202 HD, which is actually this guy right here. I'll click on it so you can see it. Uh, I got this several years ago, um, and when I got it, it was only, I think, maybe 60 bucks, 60, maybe 70. So it's gone up a little bit. Um, but yeah, this is basically what I have. And by the way, this is not a sponsored video. Um, I don't know if I need to tell you that, but whatever. Anyway, so yeah, um, this is what I have. One, At least one of the things I have. And then the other thing that I have is a BR-800, right? This is the Boss BR-800. And so what's really cool about this thing is this is a multi-track recorder. Uh, I used to have a Boss BR-864 which is a little bit bigger, but it doesn't, it, you can't use it as an audio interface. But what's cool is you can use this as an audio interface. And so um, you can record your ideas directly to the unit. It has a little SD card thing right here. It even has built-in microphones, although I never really use them. And then of course you can plug in your guitar here. You can plug in your um, headphones and you can plug in at least I think four different mics or four mics you got a line in uh, whatnot what's really cool is it even has a feature that allows you to use these faders to actually control the faders in your DAW um, I've tried it a couple times it's pretty cool it's pretty neat so yeah this thing I really liked it and the reason why I wanted to get something or the reason why I got this was because I had the older one which was the BR-864 and I really liked the idea of being able to just hit record and start recording my ideas right you know the quicker you can get to just laying down your ideas the better and so what's neat is then after you're done you can export it into uh, your DAW I think you have to save it to your computer first or you can take out the SD card put in your computer but anyway so the thing that I don't like about that particular unit is that it does not have a balanced out it only has a line out and a headphone jack which sucks if you want to use it with monitors and so that's why a lot of times I'll use the Behringer because it has a uh, balanced out or and you can connect it to uh, your monitors with that way but the issue that I was having with this particular unit is the I was having issues of latency and so if I was running a bunch of like apps and applications um, I was just yeah I was just having really bad like popping and clipping issues if you are new to this or maybe you've been in this for a while but you're like oh I'm thinking about getting an upgrade or whatever and you come to this uh, so we're on Sweetwater, but there's a lot of other options. There's uh, Zounds and a bunch of other sites, obviously, in places. Or there are a, a lot of choices and options for audio interfaces. And one of the things I found very interesting is that even though you have <laughs> a huge plethora of choices, options, or whatever, of different audio interfaces, they all essentially do the same thing which is allow you to hook up your mic or your guitar, whatever, and record to your computer. You know, you, it's your audio interface. And so it's very interesting because obviously some of them have, you know, different features, of course, you know, some have more ports, some only have like one. Um, but it, it's very interesting. You look at these, you know, obviously the most popular one is the focus, right? And uh, even my uh, old guitars, he had a focus right, and they're good. They're 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 very like uh, from what I've seen, very dependable. They're very good. In all honesty, I think for the majority of people in doing music production, you don't need 
to spend a thousand dollars on an audio interface you can get away with a lot with just getting a cheap little audio interface you look at these different companies and uh what their offerings and what what you're getting and it's just so it's interesting to see how they market their devices oh this is better this has these features that others don't have or uh, why this is going to make your mix sound better or whatever, you know, whatever stuff that they threw out there to try to get you to buy their products. And like I said, at the end of the day, they all essentially do the same thing. You know, it's very interesting. I was looking at, um, it was a universal audio, not Apollo, um, but it was a universal audio. And I came across, I believe it was this one. And I just thought it was very interesting. And listen, it could be ignorance. Maybe I just don't know, you know, what I'm talking about. But uh, it, in a sense, it kind of frustrated me because I look at this thing. It's an audio interface, USB-C, and it's freaking $250. $250, right? And it only has one input. That's it. One input, right? And I thought, oh, well, maybe it has like a built in, like a tube amp or something, you know, a tube inside. Because you look at this, it looks like grills for like, you know, heat exhaustion. And maybe it is, but I thought maybe it has a tube in it. Nope, it doesn't have a tube. And I was like, well, what's so special about this? And, uh, and then I looked down here and it says that this interface's crown jewel, however, is its built in 1176 derived. FET or FET compressor with three push button application modes, right? What the fudge does that even mean? Like, now maybe if you've been in the industry for a long time, right? Maybe that might mean something to you. You might look at that and go, wow, that's impressive. Like, I knew of this, their other product or whatever that had that, and uh, it was really good. You know, but for the average consumer, they're not going to know what the heck that means. It's not going to jump out like, oh, wow, I need to get this unit because it has this. And what one of the things I've noticed a lot of these companies do is they mention, for instance, interface with two Midas preamps. What the fudge is Midas? Who is Midas? I don't know this. If you had said this is designed, sorry if I'm yelling. But if you had said, oh, this is designed by Bose, then I, that's a name I recognize. That's a name I under, like get, you know, but there are a lot of the, it's not just them. It's a lot of companies. They use this, like we have this feature, uh, this Parasitas interface or this, uh, Glockinus, uh, preamp or whatever. And you're like, what the fudge is that? What does that even mean? It means absolutely nothing. Unless you have really established yourself. I mean, Boss has the, I'm pretty sure it has it on here, the Cosm, Cosm effects, C-O-S-M effects. What the fudge is Cosm? You know, <laughs> there's no, you know, it doesn't really mean anything, you know? Um, if you had said like, oh, well, for our effects, we worked with um, Bogner and to design uh, our tones for the guitar amp simulation or we worked with um pv or whatever for the capturing the tones of the you know 51 series or whatever then that's something you i think that most people could understand recognize or whatever but when it's something that's unique to that company that hasn't really established that beyond just their own brand then it becomes sort of like just words, you know? And so <laughs> my frustration is comes from the fact that, you know, even though there's a large variety of options, and it's not just with audio interfaces, it's other um, tools for musicians and, and even in different industries, even though there, it feels like there's a lot of options, in reality, there's not because a lot of these, like I said, at the end of the day, are doing the same thing. Now, that's not to say that they don't have little features or whatever that uh, is unique or whatever, or maybe they do certain things a little bit better than other 
things. But, you know, take, for instance, the whole Apollo line, right? Universal audio. Like, it's 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 renowned, right? You know, and I've seen a lot of uh, YouTubers and uh, different people, they talk about these things with such a, uh, you know, high regard. And that's great if you can afford it, <laughs> you know, or you're being sponsored. But for the average consumer, like, looking at something like this versus something like this you know it's it's like man this is really affordable or why should i get this this apogee uh, apogee over this well this is cheaper you know i mean the first thing you see is the price at least that's what i see it's not even the brand it's the price and then you go okay that looks good and then you see what the features of the item is, you know, and I'm not saying that the universal audio, for instance, is not a good uh, audio interface. I, I assume it's probably amazing. It's really good. But <clears throat> is it twelve hundred dollars good? Is it literally like the difference in cost for something like that justifiably beyond, say, the cost, for instance, for something like this or this or or the Behringer or whatever, you know? Is it really worth seven, eight hundred, nine hundred dollars more? You know, and I think that's the real question. And especially with things being so expensive nowadays, it, it gets very difficult to try to justify spending a whole lot of money on anything, let alone an audio interface. You know, and, and like I said, I look at something like this, this looks beautiful, but is it really fit worth fifteen hundred dollars? Is its features really worth fifteen hundred dollars you know and i would say this too i mean not that i expect or think it would happen but hey if any of these companies want to send me their products i've done test videos before um if they want to send it to me i'll i'll review it you know kind of going back to the why i like this br800 is not only is it an audio interface but it legitimately has features that none of those other freaking thousand dollar fifteen hundred dollar devices have which is the ability to record directly to the unit and then when you're like okay cool i've got my id I, i've you know you can come back to it later and then import it in your doll when you're ready to proceed with it and go further with it and i think that's an awesome feature that n hardly any other companies are really doing behringer i call upon you <laughs> Bring out something like this, but give it like a balanced out. So that brings me to what I ended up getting. And that is this Mackie Big Knob Studio Monitor Controller. Now, mind you, going back to this is not a audio interface, right? This is not for connecting to your computer. The point of this is to connect audio devices to your monitor. And that's what my boss br is lacking so i decided instead of spending several hundred dollars on another audio interface that really i probably didn't need i just got the thing that i actually needed which is just a way for me to connect my current audio interface to my monitors and this is cool because it allows you to connect uh multiple monitors and then you can switch between them i believe I think it allows you, yeah, you can change the source and you can change the monitor. So it's, it, that's basically what I need. Um, so yeah, that's what I came to the conclusion. This video was way longer than I was hoping. I, I, you know, like I said, I think if I were to close this video, I would say like, it's great that there are all these options out here, you know, as far as audio interfaces, but I would like to see companies step outside the box, literally, you know? They've, they're coming up with the same thing that you can get somewhere else. Like why, like, like they really need to ask themselves, why should somebody get our product over the Focusrite or get it over the Behringer? You know, what is it that I'm offering that this device is offering that is truly makes it worth the price that they're asking for? And a lot of companies need to do this with their products. Like, you know, this is the whole benefit of competition, you know, because at the end of the day, I think 
you're going to have two camps. You're going to have people who are like, I want to get the cheapest, best deal that I can for the money. Or you have people who are like, well, I got money to spend. Uh, I'm going to get supposedly the best. But here's here's one thing I will put before I close this video. You can go out and you could buy the most expensive audio interface, but it is guarantee you not alone going to make your mixes sound better. Um, one of the things that I've learned over the years of doing music and audio production is you learn to make the most out of what you have. And I think that's an incredibly valuable tool. You know, so many times I, I go back, you hear stories about bands that literally recorded albums with like line six pods. And these are world renowned bands, you know, and so, yeah, you know, you make the most, you do the most with what you have. So if you can only afford a little hundred dollar audio interface, it's okay. You know, just milk it for as much as you can get out of it. And then if you find like, hey, I've maxed it out, I can't do anything more and I need more, then you look at getting a, an upgrade. But I think it's much better to go at it from that route than saying, you know what, I'm just going to spend $700 or $600 and buy a, you know, this expensive thing because I think that that's really what I need. And you've, you don't have any experience with anything else, you know? Um, but yeah, anyway, that's where my rant ends. Uh, I hope this video was somewhat informational. That's not a real word, but we can use it. Um, cause all words at the end of the day are made up. <laughs> uh informative there we go but uh anyway i hope you guys have a great day hope you have a good weekend as it's coming up and uh i will catch you guys later